Australian Prime Minister personally visited China. This means that Australia no longer cares about the warnings of the United States and only wants to regain the lost Chinese market. In order to show goodwill to China, Australia also returned three precious cultural relics and artworks to China and cancelled the review of the 99-year lease of Darwin Port. So why is Australia suddenly unwilling to follow the United States? Can the cooperative relationship between China and Australia return to its original state? Welcome to Word Answer, where you will be able to learn about projects, cooperation around the world and important information about China. Subscribe to us and discover more interesting events around the world. China is one of the world's largest consumers of iron ore, consuming approximately 1.1 billion tons of iron ore every year. But China itself can only produce 200 million tons of iron ore per year, which means China needs to import about 900 million tons of iron ore every year. In the past seven years, China's iron ore imports have mainly relied on Australia, importing more than 500 million tons of iron ore every year accounting for 50% of China's total imports. However, after the political relations between the two countries changed, the cooperation between the two parties also ushered in a worrying scene. In 2018, after Morrison took office as the Prime Minister of Australia, he immediately adopted a series of repressive measures against China. This is not only reflected in the political level, but also in the economic field. Among the most obvious measures are the refusal of Huawei to participate in 5G construction, and the implementation of a series of restrictive measures on Chinese domestic companies, resulting in many Chinese companies having to suspend operations. But the most serious thing is that Australia has also restricted the export of iron ore to China. According to statistics, from 2018 to 2022, the amount of iron ore exported by Australia to China decreased by 230 million tons, resulting in indirect losses of 23 billion US dollars. Faced with this challenge, China has had to adjust its iron ore import strategy. Brazil is one of the five countries with the largest iron ore reserves in the world. As far as I know, Brazil's proven iron ore reserves are currently as high as 21 billion tons. If potential reserves are taken into account, it may even reach 62 billion tons, which also makes Brazil a very potential iron ore exporter. So in 2021, China began to shift its iron ore import channels to Brazil. According to statistics, Brazil exported 110 million tons of iron ore to China in 2020, and in 2021, this number increased to 200 million tons. This means that Australia has lost 200 million tons of iron ore market share and has been replaced by Brazil. It is worth mentioning that China's previous trade with Brazil was in US dollars. As imports increase, it becomes less convenient to continue using US dollars for transactions. Therefore, in 2022, Brazil decided to use RMB to settle iron ore transactions. This decision further increased the amount of iron ore exported by Brazil to China. As of 2022, Brazil's total iron ore exports to China have reached 230 million tons accounting for 21% of China's total iron ore imports. According to reports, this year has been a year of rising global iron ore prices. For example, iron ore prices have risen from 100 US dollars per ton in 2022 to 130 US dollars per ton. The rise in iron ore prices has caused countries to reduce iron ore imports, but for a huge economy like China, the supply of iron ore is crucial to development. Therefore, despite the pressure of high iron ore prices, China still needs to import large quantities of iron ore to meet domestic demand. In this context, Australia has found that an opportunity has arisen to regain its market share in China. 
As a result, Australia no longer cooperated with the United States to jointly sanction China, but began a series of positive actions. First, Australia returned three precious cultural relics and artworks to China. Subsequently, the Australian Prime Minister cancelled the review of China's 99-year lease at the port of Darwin in Australia. Australia even ignored US warnings and planned to visit China. So why is Australia taking these actions? As we all know, Australia's former Prime Minister Morrison is a pro-American. Under his leadership, Australia implemented a series of restrictive measures against China. These measures include imposing tariffs on a number of Chinese goods and cancelling the visas of some Chinese students in Australia. These measures not only damage the economic and trade relations between China and Australia, but also have a certain impact on China's economic development. As a result, China has taken a series of countermeasures, the most serious of which is restricting Australian coal imports. According to statistics, Australia's coal exports to China account for more than 20% of its total exports every year. Australia is losing hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue every year as China imposes restrictions on Australian coal. Interestingly, this showdown was not resolved so simply. Not long after China responded, Australia imposed restrictions on their iron ore exports. According to statistics, Australia's iron ore exports to China have decreased by 300 million tons since 2018. This has reduced domestic revenue as China faces a brief iron ore crisis. It is understood that Australia will lose more than 8 billion US dollars in 2021 alone. What is even more worrying is that with the sharp reduction in iron ore exports, many iron ore related companies in Australia have begun to run into operating difficulties. In order to cut costs, these companies have to take measures such as salary cuts and layoffs. These measures have led to tensions in Australia's labour market, with many workers going on strike. According to statistics, from 2018 to 2022, the number of strikes in Australia has increased year by year. Although Australia has taken some measures to ease the pressure on the labour market, such as raising the minimum wage, providing more job opportunities and encouraging companies to improve employee benefits, the effect is not very significant. At the same time, 2022 is the period of change of the Australian Prime Minister. The newly appointed Prime Minister Albanese has gradually realised that following the United States in imposing sanctions on China has had a negative impact on Australia's development. On the contrary, those countries that have established friendly relations with China have achieved rapid development. Take Brazil as an example. By establishing good economic and trade relations with China, Brazil has not only increased its iron ore exports significantly, but has also become one of China's largest corn importers. According to statistics, these two cooperations bring tens of billions of dollars in revenue to Brazil every year. In this case, Australia is promoting development. It can only ignore the warnings of the United States and try to improve relations with China in order to regain its iron ore market share. So can they successfully regain China's iron ore market share? As far as I know, the new Australian Prime Minister will start a four-day visit to China on November 4, 2023. During this period, China stated that they and Australia were both countries in the Asia-Pacific region. They are all important members of the G20. There are no historical grudges or fundamental conflicts of interest between the two countries, and they can definitely become partners of mutual trust and cooperation. And recently, China has resumed imports of Australian timber and coal. From this perspective, China is not only willing to establish closer trade relations with Australia, but also has demand for Australian resources and products. Therefore, China is likely to regain Australia's iron ore market share. Once China resumes importing iron ore from Australia in the future, Australia's iron ore exports will also increase significantly.